Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are going to start the press conference today with comments from Premier Horgan. We'll then move to Minister Ralston before going to questions from media. A reminder to media on the line, please press star one to queue up now. Go ahead, Premier Horgan. Uh, great. Thanks very much, uh, Jen. And, of course, I'm, I'm here on the traditional territory of the Lekonga-speaking people, the Squamalt and Songhees First Nations. Uh, Minister Ralston is in Vancouver on the territory of the uh, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. It is uh, interesting to have a press conference this way uh, with a virtually empty press gallery here. And I know uh, Bruce has limited uh, media present in, in Vancouver, but we're going to try and get through this to, as best we can. I want to acknowledge, of course, as I did last night, uh, how proud I am of British Columbians who have stepped up and are acknowledging that they can play a role in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic by taking the directions that we've been getting from Dr. Bonnie Henry for some weeks now and 100% commitment from British Columbians will do what we can to bend the curve. But for people who have lost their earnings uh, as a result of COVID-19, there are significant challenges ahead. Today is April 1st. People are thinking about the bills they will receive for the coming months. One of those bills, of course, will be their BC Hydro bill. So Minister Ralston and the government and BC Hydro have been working on trying to bring forward uh, policy proposals that will reduce costs for people right now. And that means ensuring, of course, that we do our level best to ap apply for these programs only if we need them so that there are more resources available for those who desperately need them. For people who are out of work or have had their wages reduced due to COVID-19, BC Hydro will be offering a three-month credit on your power bill so you can focus on the things that matter to you most. For small businesses that have been forced to close, Hydro will be giving a three-month payment holiday starting today, April 1st, so that when the crisis passes, you'll be in a better position to start up right away. And we've been hearing from large industries as well that their uh, access to capital, their liquidity, their cash flow is a significant problem in these very challenging times. So BC Hydro will give the option to large industrial customers to have 50% of their payments deferred for the next three months, and that deferment will allow those businesses to continue operating and to continue to have people working in uh, mines and other industrial projects across British Columbia should they be abiding by the public health officer's rules and guidelines uh, established with the Workers' Compensation Board to make sure that work sites are safe. In addition to that, today is April 1st, and the BC Utilities Commission has approved a 1% reduction across the board, all customer classes uh, for BC Hydro customers, whether you're a resident, a small business, or a large industrial user. And I want to acknowledge the work that's been done by Minister Ralston and his staff at BC Hydro to bring these programs forward so quickly. To have a, 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 a holiday if you're a small business for the next three months when it comes to uh, your, your hydro bills, when you have a credit on your bill as a residential customer, if you've lost your wages or you've lost your job as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, are initiatives that will help make life a little bit easier uh, during the months ahead. And during that time, I want to remind everyone to continue to practice uh, physical distancing, continue to ensure that if you don't need to leave your home, you don't. And of course, wash your hands as regularly as you possibly can. Be focused on getting well, being well, and helping those around you. And with that, I'll, I'll turn the microphone over to Minister Ralston in Vancouver. Thank you, Minister Ralston. Please go ahead. Thank you, Premier Horgan, and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge as well that we're on at, here at our Vancouver Cabinet offices. We're on the territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. As the Premier just said, today we're announcing new relief on power bills to help homeowners and renters, small businesses, and major industries manage their expenses during the COVID-19 pandemic. These measures both complement the province's COVID-19 action plan and the measures announced by the federal government to help workers and businesses. We know that people are losing their jobs, shuttering their stores and restaurants, and in some cases may be on the brink of curtailing operations at mines, mills, and plants. Working together with BC Hydro, we have designed a comprehensive targeted package that will provide immediately, immediate help to those most in need. First, 
residential customers who have lost their jobs or who are unable to work as a result of the COVID-19 will receive a bill credit of three times their average monthly bill. This will add up to around $477 uh, in savings for the average customer. I want to be clear, for residential customers, this bill credit does not have to be repaid. Customers may also as well be eligible for BC Hydro's existing customer crisis fund, which provides access to grants of up to $600 to pay their bills for people facing temporary financial hardship. Second, small businesses that have been forced to close due to COVID-19 will have their power bills forgiven for three months for the electricity used between April and June 2020. This will, pri this will provide immediate re relief to retail stores, restaurants, tourism, the personal services sector, and other small businesses that are struggling to keep their workers on payroll. All residential and commercial customers will still be able to access BC Hydro's COVID customer assistance program. Launched shortly after the crisis began, it provides customers with the option to defer payments or arrange a flexible payment plan, plan with no penalty to help pay their BC Hydro bills. Thirdly, uh, the major industries such as pulp mills, uh, mines, will have the opportunity to defer 50% of their bill payments for three months. Electricity is one of the largest operating costs for these businesses. Repayment for the industry's deferring bill payment will occur according to a prescribed plan with the first payment not due until September 1, 2020. We are working with BC Hydro to make sure there is a simple and streamlined process for customers to apply for relief so we can implement these, measure, these new measures as soon and as effectively as is, as, as is possible. But we wanted to let people know more relief is coming. Customers will have until June 30th to apply for relief. Those who have lost their jobs or are unable to work due to COVID shouldn't have to choose between paying their rent or mortgage and paying their hydro bill. These measures will also provide relief to small businesses that had to close during COVID-19 and support them in reopening once the pandemic is behind us. And it will help to sustain major industries across our province to support jobs, communities and our economy during these challenging times. Since forming government, we've been focused on keeping hydro rates affordable and making sure BC Hydro is working for people. And as the Premier just mentioned, electricity rates are actually coming down by 1% for all BC Hydro customers after the BC Utilities Commission provided interim approval of BC Hydro's rates application submitted last August. This is the first rate decrease in decades and is a direct result of the work we've been doing together with BC Hydro to control costs and find savings. COVID-19 touches all aspects of our lives and our economy. In this stressful time, we want people and businesses to know we will do everything we can to support them. The relief on power bills we're announcing today builds on our COVID-19 action plan. Our plan is focused on services to protect people's health and safety, providing financial relief to people and businesses, and building BC's plan for economic recovery in partnership with business and labour. Combined with the support measures introduced by the federal government, there are several key items in our, our action plan that will make a difference for business, including a one-time tax-free payment of $1,000 for people who can't work due to the pandemic delaying tax filing and payment deadlines for personal income tax, employer health tax, municipal and regional district tax on short-term accommodations, carbon tax, motor fuel tax, and tobacco tax. We're also cutting the school rate in half for commercial properties in classes four, five, and six in the 2020 tax year, and providing funding for the hard-hit tourism and culture sector a clear commitment that we will help them survive the immediate crisis and rebuild. These measures will be a significant help for many British Columbians who are under added stress due to the pandemic. In concluding, I want to echo the Premier's thank you to the staff at BC Hydro and government ministries who've been working extremely long hours to design and implement the power relief programs we're announcing today. I'd also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge all the essential workers 
at BC Hydro who are on the job 24-7 throughout the COVID crisis to make sure the lights and the power stay on. The power line technicians and the people working at dams and substations and in control centres all over our province who we're relying on to keep the power on and who are working through the same fears, stress and anxiety as the rest of us. Thank you. The Premier and I are happy now to answer any questions. Thank you, Minister. A reminder to media to press star one to get into the queue. Please unmute your phones. You will not be audible until we call your name. Our first question comes from Tanya Fletcher. Hi, I'm wondering if you can uh, clarify and perhaps um, specify uh, for um, these uh, the three months um, um, average savings of $477. You mentioned that this is for people who've lost their jobs or can't work. Is that um, the criteria or is this across the board? And if it is specifically um, for certain people, do they have to apply and how does that work? Do they have to prove that? Thanks, Tanya. Uh, over to Minister Ralston. Yes, um, it's for people who have, uh, have lost uh, their, their employment uh, and there are a, it's, it's a fairly broadly defined category and maybe I can just give a little bit more detail. It includes uh, workers including the self-employed who are quarantined or sick with COVID-19, workers including the self-employed who are taking care of a family member or parents with children who require care or supervision due to school or daycare closures and are unable to earn employment income, irrespective of whether they qualify for EI or not. Obviously, those who qualify for EI uh, would be uh, in the category. Uh, the, the calculation is an average of uh, the bill over the previous year, and it, uh, for residential customers, it will come in the form of a credit to be applied to to bills uh, over the next several months. In fact, during the summer, since many people's bill tends to decline, the credit may uh, carry uh, someone a little bit further than, than three months, maybe three and a half months or, or four months even. Thank you, Minister. Our next question is from Mary Griffin. Oh, hi, Premier. Hi, Minister. Um, we've been speaking with a number of small business owners who um, are looking for relief, and I guess the hydro is going to help, but they're really getting hammered because they've paid their rent today, and they don't know what they're going to do going forward. A lot of them have said, that's it. They don't have any money in the bank to pay their rent on May 1st because they're not getting any relief, as in the residential sector. Can you offer any hope for them going forward? Yeah, the small and, business. Uh, is, oh. Oh, you go ahead, Bruce. Sure. Sorry. Uh, um, the uh, small business uh, uh, sector um, will uh, be able to apply starting the week of uh, April 14th. Uh, in the interim, there are no uh, disconnections uh, from service that are contemplated. And there is also uh, the uh, commitment of the previous program that's already in existence, the COVID-19 program, that will help people um, defer and rearrange the, their, their bills. And this is a new addition to that, that program. And I would, I would add, uh, Mary, to Bruce's comments broadly across the small business sector. We've been working, uh, Minister James, Minister Robinson, have been working with the federal government to make sure that we're coordinating the programs that we're bringing forward. This is, uh, as always, uncharted territory for both orders of government. We need to make sure that we target the resources to those uh, hardest hit, and you've given a good example of the types of businesses that uh, depend on cash flow, uh, usually month to month, to keep things going. Uh, when your business is uh, empty, for weeks at a time, this is an, a, a significant challenge. Both orders of government understand that. We started with a $5 billion package just last week. The federal government uh, continues to bring forward initiatives. Uh, we'll be in contact as we are uh, regularly with the federal government to make sure that we target uh, relief and support for small businesses and, of course, and most importantly, their employees that keep those businesses operating in, in the good times, or rather, I should say, in the normal times. Thank you, Premier. Our next question is from Lisa Yuzda. Regarding the application process, so somebody has a bill right now that says or comes in the next couple of weeks that says they need to pay at Hydro. I, I thought I heard you say that they have until 
June 30th or July 30th to apply so those bills will just pile up if someone doesn't pay. I'm just wondering how the details of that work. Thank you. Over to you, Minister Ralston. Uh, for a small business, the, the uh, application process is expected to be open uh, in the week of April 14th. They're obviously moving it forward as fast as they can. And yes, uh, customers will have up to June 30th to apply for relief. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Matt Preprost, Alaska Highway News. Good afternoon, uh, Premier and, and Minister. Um, Premier, yesterday you had uh, told uh, British Columbians to stay home. Earlier in the day, uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry was not uh, uh, confident measures uh, would be uh, lifted by the end of April and that um, we might even see a second wave of this virus here in the fall. Uh, here in Fort St. John, the Site C project remains an ongoing concern. City councillors have called for construction to be suspended. Uh, so has our former Northern Medical Health Officer and the Blueberry River First Nation has now written you personally. Personally, I'm just wondering at, uh, at what point uh, will the province uh, consider um, suspending construction to limit the risks on Fort St. John and the Peace Region? I've not uh, seen the correspondence uh, from the Blueberry Nation, uh, but I have been in contact and discussion with uh, Mayor Ackerman as recently as this week, uh, uh, yesterday. And uh, I've, I've heard the concerns of uh, people in the north. I've also uh, listened to the advice and direction we've been getting from public health officials, particularly Dr. Henry and the Workers' Compensation Board, uh, WorkSafe BC, which is putting in place uh, rules uh, of uh, operation for not just Site C, but other projects that have a lot of uh, people uh, coming in and coming out. We're confident uh, that taking direction from public health officials that are on, on the ground, working on these issues on a regular basis, looking at the data hourly, not uh, from a historic perspective as someone who is now retired might, but on an hourly basis. And we're confident that uh, the measures that have been put in place by BC Hydro to protect workers, to protect the community are appropriate at this time. And until uh, Dr. Henry uh, tells us otherwise, we're going to carry on. Thank you. Our next question goes to Rob Monroe. Monroe is no longer on the line. Our next question is Keith Baldry. Hi, yes, uh, Mr. Premier, both you and Minister Ralston I referred to the stress people are under right now. Um, Dr. Bonnie Henry yesterday and Minister Dix both said we're going to be in this for, for quite a while. Are you concerned about this, the psychological impact this is going to have on British Columbia? Is it literally um, a rise in mental health challenges at the very least for many people? Well, certainly uh, we are. Uh, it, these are real concerns. Anxiety is high. Uh, particularly uh, everyone knows that financial issues are always challenging for individuals, for families, and uh, when you've lost your job and there's no prospect in the immediate term of uh, that being resolved, you're looking to government, you're looking to family, you're looking to other uh, social agencies to fill those gaps. And uh, I'm encouraged and optimistic that people are stepping up to meet those challenges. Uh, Minister Darcy, uh, Minister Responsible for Mental Health and Addictions, has uh, put in place a plan within her ministry to ensure that we are reaching out as best we can to make sure that those people in communities that provide services, mental health uh, services, social workers and others, have the supports that they need so that they can deal with an increasing uh, workload. Uh, domestic violence is a big concern. We haven't seen an uptick uh, uh, in the last briefing that I've had, but these are issues that, that may come into play in the, in the short term or in the long term. Again, when, when we come out of this, we'll come out of it. Uh, Dr. Henry's been clear. These, these initiatives are in place for today, not forever, and we will be able to, to guide British Columbians as we get closer to bending that curve. And that's why last night I asked all British Columbians to recommit to each other and those frontline health workers and other workers who are keeping the economy going, keeping food uh, in our grocery stores, getting it from uh, other parts of the world into those stores so people can access it. This is an extraordinary time and it's going to take extraordinary resilience from British Columbians to get through it. And, and if we help each other, if we support each other, we will do that. Our next question is from Shannon Waters. <clears throat> Hello, Premier Minister. Um, I'm curious about this program for homeowners um, who may be getting a break on their bill if they've had their income 
um, impacted and how that will apply to landlords, specifically those who have tenants where they are covering the utility bills at this point in time. Will there be some kind of mechanism put in place to ensure that tenants might get some kind of a break as well if their landlords are given one? Thank you. Over to you, Minister. Over to you, Minister Ralston. Uh, well, certainly, uh, Minister Selena Robinson has set in place a program that will uh, give tenants relief. There's a program of uh, for eligible tenants to uh, receive a, a stipend of uh, which will be paid to their landlord of $500 a month, um, and that program is uh, is in place. And uh, I expect that that will be. Uh, something that uh, those in, in the position that you've described will be able to access. Our next question comes from Nomi Mujanda, Radio Canada. Go ahead, Nomi. We'll move on then. Our next question is Les Lane. Oh, thank you. Minister or Premier, is, was the one percent cut expected, and and was it independent of the COVID situation? And I'm curious also if you have a ballpark estimate of how much the various deferments and concessions on bills will cost BC Hydro. Over, over to you, Minister Ralston. Uh, the the one percent uh, is independent of the COVID crisis. That was based on the rate application made uh, last August uh, to the BC Utilities Commission and it came into effect uh, today. Um, in terms of the cost of the, of the program, the measures um, for uh, residential and commercial uh, customers, small business customers, will cost about, uh, it's an estimated 80 to 90 million dollars. The money that uh, is being deferred by industrial customers, and that will be those will be placed in a deferral account to be recovered at a future date from uh, ratepayers. The, uh, the the money that uh, is being deferred by uh, in, the industrial customers uh, will be money that is owed on the balance sheet, uh, and they will be uh, charged a, a modest rate of interest and will be expected to repay, although there is a provision for, uh, given the economic circumstances we're in, of uh, perhaps a company not being able to pay. So there has been that amount set aside as well. But uh, roughly $90 million uh, is the cost of the program. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Binder Sajjan. Hi there. Um, Premier, I wanted to ask you, so I mean, at a time when people are staying at home, they're using, you know, more electricity, it makes sense to maybe offset some of those costs. By the same token, people are perhaps not driving as much, and so perhaps the driving risk goes down in terms of crashes. Is your government also looking at a similar type of program for ICBC? Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I know Minister Eby has been uh, focused on ICBC uh, since about 24 hours after he was sworn in and given the responsibility, and it has been an extraordinary task without COVID-19. Uh, I know that we're looking at an en enhanced care model going forward. That's being developed right now so we can reduce costs for people, all classes of drivers, uh, and that's, that's the priority of the minister at this time. You will know that the cost of driving has decreased because of the cost of gasoline going down as well. Uh, just around a dollar a litre uh, in British Columbia at the present time, the lowest it's been in recent memory for sure. So uh, I don't believe we have any programs contemplated to reduce uh, auto insurance costs uh, as a result of COVID-19, but that's a good suggestion. I'll mention it to Minister Eby next time I talk to him. Our next question comes from Lisa Cordasco. Thank you. Uh, forgive me if you've answered this already, but I just want to clarify that all customers, whether residential, small business, or large industrial users, will have to apply to BC Hydro for relief. And uh, if that's the case, how soon can they apply? And how do they prove, uh, in the case of individuals, that they you know, have been laid off or cannot, cannot work because of COVID-19? 
Over to Minister Ralston. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, eligible residential customers will be able to apply by the end of next week, and small business uh, customers will be able to apply starting the week of April 14th. Um, and they'll have up to June 30th, 2020 to apply for bill relief. Uh, eligible industrial uh, uh, customers can contact their key uh, account manager. Uh, in terms of eligibility, um, the, uh, the obvious uh, eligibility for uh, those who are laid off would be uh, an application uh, bef with uh, EI. Uh, and then there will be other, it, there's an effort going to be made to work with other agencies so that people can uh, prove um, to the satisfaction of uh, Hydro and uh, that they are eligible. It's uh, meant to be a, a, a process that uh, will be flexible and, and efficient. Our next question is from Colton Davies. Hi, Premier. Hi, Minister. Um, a small minority of customers in BC get their electricity service from Fortis or from their local municipalities. Uh, will those customers uh, get a subsidy, uh, subsidy from government in the same way um, if their electricity providers don't provide uh, the same supports that uh, the, the government is offering as announced today through BC Hydro? Thank you. Minister Ralston. Well, thank you very much. Um, certainly, um, in the Fortis service area, there are uh, many customers in British Columbia. Um, we, uh, I have uh, spoken with the CEO, uh, Roger D'Antonio, of Fortis, uh, and uh, because uh, Hydro is owned by the government, it's obviously a different relationship. Fortis is a private company, uh, but they are interested and are following very closely the uh, the uh, program that BC Hydro is putting forward. Uh, I've also s uh, spoken with uh, the BC Utilities Commission, uh, which regulates Fortis, and uh, they have jurisdiction, an independent jurisdiction, over what Fortis might be obliged to do. So uh, I understand that the BC Utilities Commission and Fortis are in discussion, and uh, I'll, I'll await uh, the re response there, but it, it may very well be. Uh, very close to what uh, BC Hydro is providing for its customers. And finally, we have Richard Zussman. This is a question for Premier Horgan. Premier, are you worried about the impact uh, this virus will have on students, mainly at colleges, who are studying things like nursing or welding or culinary school, where they need that hands-on, in-person training to be able to move on to full-time employment? Are you worried that not being able to have this for the next few months will set the workforce back and, and potentially cause some problems uh, once we get out of this. That is a real concern and uh, Minister Melanie Mark is reviewing that now with uh, presidents of universities and colleges. Uh, all of the lab work that needs to be done, it's not just in those uh, practical applications or co-op programs where there's hands-on work. There's many of uh, many uh, Bachelor of Science degrees require intense uh, laboratory work that has to be done under supervision within uh, a confined area that's usually on a campus. So these are challenges, but Minister Mark is looking at that. It, it leads in, I think, to uh, the broader approach that I'm taking with my colleagues with the government is to make sure that those uh, ministers responsible for the various components of government operations, whether it be uh, Bruce and his work on energy and BC Hydro, uh, whether it be uh, Minister Robinson with respect to housing and municipal affairs, Minister uh, Farnworth and on it goes. I'm very confident in my team. I'm very confident they, that they are seized with making sure that we're providing services for people, always focusing on making sure that the things that government can provide, we will provide. We're going to keep monitoring these programs on a regular basis. If we need to add more, we will. Minister James is working diligently to make sure we can contain all of the costs to the extent possible. But we're also hearing very clearly from the business community and from people that we can worry about the costs later. I'm not saying we'd be reckless here, but we need to make sure that people don't suffer unduly as a result of these issues. That includes getting that certificate, getting that diploma, getting that degree that uh, people have worked so hard for and in the last stages of their final year of those programs to have this come down upon them is a challenge, but one that's not insurmountable. And I know the minister and those that are delivering the programs are working on that right now. Thank you, everyone. That's Great. all the time we have today.